What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to break down this Xbox showcase. And we've been doing a lot of these showcases all for the past few weeks from the Sony showcase to the Summer Games Fest to now we're jumping to Xbox. And basically, overall, a lot of people have had mixed feelings on the previous showcases. And even for the Xbox One, there were a lot of people that were really hyped about it, some people that were really upset. But overall, we're going to discuss the kind of the good, the bad, of what we felt about the showcase overall and just give you some kind of insight on the games that we also saw uh, throughout this entire thing. And just to give kind of a little bit of a tidbit, there were 27 games shown here, 13 from the first party studios and 21 of them are going to Game Pass, which generally means that we'll roughly see 12 to 14 of them being a multi-plat in some way, whether they're going to Sony or they're going to both Nintendo as well. But overall, I mean, there's a lot of games that are showed here. So I, I want to give a list of every single one, but Obviously, big names like Starfield. We obviously saw Persona 3 Reload. Cyberpunk made a showing about Fable, Star Wars Outlaws. There's a lot of games here, uh, but I kind of want to jump right into the kind of the main chunk of this is about what did you like when you saw this showcase? And obviously, I have a long list of things. That I felt like overall, the, the Xbox showcase did, uh, did a good job overall just showing games that are one going to Game Pass. I think that was one of the main objectives that this i feel like every xbox showcase is kind of a plethora of things to say hey this is coming to game pass and if you are a subscriber to that you have access to these games and like i mentioned before 21 games are going to game pass from this list now it's not all at the same time but there that means that all this a lot most of them are going to be going and if you are a subscriber you do have access to them um i thought starting the show off with fable was uh was smart it kind of just quelled a lot of people's rumors that will fable be showed i think it kind of got people excited for it but at the same time i don't think it necessarily broke ground on any major like information like there's no date that they gave you for this it just it kind of just shows you that yes fable is alive and well and fable is also going to follow in that kind of comedic same tone that they've had in the past um but i think overall if i was looking at things that i like uh and i know a lot of you guys were big fans of this too but star wars outlaws i think was a really cool game not going to game pass so this is just a multi-plat uh you know you'll see this at the Ubi, uh, ubisoft show as well but if i'm gonna say something else i'm a big fan of persona so persona 3 reload uh going day, dropping day one on game pass now a lot of people this was leaked even before the xbox showcase anyway um but this is uh a lot of people uh, considers persona 3 one of the best persona games of the entire series and now it's getting remade and it looks really good uh, the only thing that some people will probably rag on them for was some of the voice actors from the original are not going to be um, uh, being brought back for the remake, but the game looks great. The same mechanics like we've seen in other Persona games. Um, and uh, I thought this is going to be a good thing because I'm a big Persona fan and the fact it's going to be on Game Pass allows me to just play this fully. I'll definitely have a review for this game, the remake at least, because I love Persona games. I, I, I was brought in because of Persona 5 Royal uh and the world persona 5 first then royal but i've been a fan of persona series since and uh having a remake of three uh, is definitely going to be a great thing but i want to jump to you guys next and then we'll if we have any more we can add on to this but uh angelica what was the thing that you felt that you really liked about the show yeah and i know people are probably going to be like well when you get to starfield we're going to have a separate yeah, video don't worry we're about gonna... starfield <laughs> so definitely oh, go yeah. check that out but uh just to add to your star wars outlaws which i thought was really cool it's an open world game that you're following kind of like a um a bounty hunter or say it's vigilante type person so i think that's such a cool concept in the open world with star wars and like you said we're going to see more of that about the ubisoft but i tell you what another game that that you know we talk about hellblade and we talk about avowed and we talk about fable but clockwork revolution i thought looked pretty interesting it had a bioshock feel to it with an interesting dynamic of controlling time and you know you 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 said that this one is going to be an exclusive i believe so yep. i think it was an interesting show for that i, I liked the, some of the dynamics and the artwork and it had that bioshock vibe to it which is really really interesting although we did see a coming you know coming due time which i've never seen before in a video game <laughs> you usually don't even either give a date or you say like a year but like coming due time i've never saw in a video game before which is a little strange but it looked pretty interesting to me yeah, what it tells me is that it's probably going to be 2025. Like, I think, <laughs> yeah, I, think I think it's minimum, saying 2025 without actually telling you that it's 2025. Um, you know, In Exile is the same group that made uh, We Happy Few. So, you know, there was just like their I second go. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, this is their second go around of that 
Bioshock kind of feel yeah. of a game. So the uh, the the trailer they gave definitely had a better, closer look to Bioshock yeah. than what we happy few did. I mean, a lot yeah. of people were excited about it. when we first saw it. We're like, yeah, this is bugged out like Bioshock, but yeah. this uh, this Clockwork Revolution definitely looked a lot closer to that atmosphere. Um, Hockey, what did you feel like was your you know most liked thing other than Starfield? Because we're gonna have a whole Starfield oh, yeah. show here. Yeah, so I thought, um, like you said, Fable, Avowed, uh, they showed some pretty uh, sizable titles that people were waiting for uh, for a long time. So I thought them showing that was pretty cool. Uh, they did show that, the, like I said, Hellblade. I wish I got a little bit more than, than just the cinematic with that. But, um, you know, things like the, uh, I think it was like the bank robbery game, I think Payday 3. Yeah, Payday actually 3. jumped out to me because I'm, I'm looking for new shooters. So I never played one or two or really even heard about it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then another one that uh, kind of brought me back was City Skylines too. It almost had a tycoon, uh, roller coaster tycoon yeah. Yeah, vibe did. to it, yeah. which is pretty cool. I don't know if I'm actually going to give it a shot, but yeah, it kind of put a smile on my face. But uh, a lot of good things uh, and a lot of good titles coming out. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to say anything else, I mean, I'm, I'm a big Cyberpunk fan. I, as much as how butchered their, their launch was, the Phantom Liberty uh, expansion. I mean, this is actually taking place during Cyberpunk, so it's actually a point in the game where... You break off and do a separate kind of part of the story. They actually, I think they reference it during the main storyline um, that there's this kind of area that's like on off limits. No one ever goes there. And that's kind of what this is supposed to go into. Um, I kind of wish that they had an expansion later on. Obviously, you know, if you played the game, you know what happens at the end. But um, it also does vary depending on what choice you make. But I think that this definitely does get me excited. And um, I think the fact that you have games like even... A lot of people were excited with metaphor uh this is kind of the the i don't know if this is the the rumored persona 6 that a lot of people were expecting i thought I remember atlas obviously is a big uh, you know they've been leaking a lot of things rumors have been going around that persona 6 is going to be either exclusive to the playstation 5 or it's going to drop to multiplat or whatever it may be but this might be that rumored Persona 6 game that people, mm, you, you know, so? I, I don't. I'm I think it's saying, a separate thing. I think it's a separate game they're trying. I mean, it might be. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah. it's Persona 6. I'm saying this is metaphor, but I'm saying this might be the rumor, rumor, that, the rumor that everyone about. thinks yeah. that, oh, this is Persona, it 6, might be Persona 6. But it's yeah. not it's like it's not a Persona 6. It's a it's metaphor is that game that they're making. So this might have been that rumored game. Now, granted, for me, like, yeah, it, I'll, I'm definitely gonna play it. I mean, because man, if it's anything like Persona, which it seems like it is, it will be a great story-based game with with you know role-basing uh, RPG mechanics. So it'll be a fun game to play. But definitely got a lot of people like were shocked when they saw it um, <laughs> that it was it wasn't Persona Six. But that will be something interesting to go down the line. But with the good, we do need to talk about the bad. And uh, obviously, when I'm looking at this, and as a big Halo fan myself. Halo was not shown at the showcase. And that was one of the things I said right to Legilla Kill while watching. It was like, Halo's not getting shown today. And all, all I can tell you is that a lot of fans on Twitter were were calling the end of the you know, end of the world, the apocalypse, the game is dead. Um, and not even on like they aren't even like waiting for season four to drop before they make their final conclusions. Season four drops next week, next Tuesday. Now, I kind of wish they had just a trailer. Like, they've they've had trailers for the season expansions before. They actually had a really good one for Season 3, which got a lot of people excited. And I was, like, hoping that they would drop another one during the Xbox showcase to show people that, yes, Halo is not dying. And there is a, a good chunk of content. Because we, we already know that there is, based on all the information that 3 for 3 had told us themselves. So a lot of fans have been kind of makes you have, like, the fans like Halo follower who are already been the uh, an edge off the cliff type of people who are like, oh, I'm the most disappointed I've ever been in my entire life that jumps onto that. And then you have other people like, hey, we get updates daily on three for three season four. So it's like having a, having a, a trailer is not going to change anything that we know. But at the same time, it's like, yes, Halo is part of your your, you know, your repertoire of games. And there are other games that were, didn't have a chance to show what they had either. But it was just kind of like Halo hasn't really been shown this year or last year so it's like you know are, are you gonna show give us a trailer for season four are you kind of are you kind of saying all right let let halo be under the radar make a comeback i mean i'm not sure what the strategy is with that um it is unfortunate because i feel like season four is a great has a lot of content right, and in it and i feel like by showing people yes we had a horrible start of halo infinite but right now there's a lot of things to do 
So come check it out. And here's a trailer to show all the things that are included. I mean, I don't know what the strategy is not having that there, but uh, I guess I guess this is their method of saying, let them show you themselves by just having it drop. But Haki, what was one thing that you felt like you weren't really a fan of or you didn't really like from the showcase? Yes, I don't want to complain too much because they did show me some good gameplay from a variety of different games, but I just wanted to point to, you know, Fable and Hellblade not really showing the gameplay. I would have wished that they showed me just a little bit of gameplay. I thought both of the cinematics, uh, especially Hellblade, was, was very unique and very cool, but just give me a little bit of gameplay and I would have been super happy. Yeah, and uh, Angelica, what would you feel like you didn't really like you? I, I agree with both of you. I mean, we didn't talk about this before and you guys both nailed it. To me, you know, when they show like in-game footage, there is a difference between in-game cinematics and in-game gameplay, right? And so we did get like little snippets of gameplay, but I do, I agree with Hockey. I really wish we got to see a little bit more of that gameplay, even though some of the stuff looked really good. But I'm going to bounce on that Halo thing. I thought Halo was the big disappointing thing. I think two things can be true at once, right? I don't think Master Chief's being put in a retirement home, and I don't think Halo as a franchise is being put on ice, right? But... This is Halo Season 4, and you would think that the Xbox A show, with the A game show, their number one show, would show, you know, and try to pump up Season 4, like Mars Man said, that, hey, there's some content coming to this, and get the whole world that's looking at this to say, maybe we should check out Halo Infinite again, right? I mean, that's kind of what the whole push would have been. I get it. Like, it's is it the biggest deal in the world? No, but they did show Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout 76 Atlantic City, Huh. Sea of Thieves expansion, Overwatch 2 expansion. You're showing expansions, but not for Halo. You know, I just feel like perception wise, show a little bit of respect to one of your franchise, uh, you know, cornerstones. Yeah, it's like, you know, Overwatch has been kind of obviously they're doing crap themselves, right? They 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 officially announced that they aren't having the PVE mode anymore, which was the only reason why you even put a two next to the game, yeah. right? Yeah, and game. they get rid of that, and you they you still show off their story missions, which they haven't had since yeah. over. They haven't never had ever, right? So like, you should be showing if you get especially sell Fallout seventy six, Atlantic City. Like, yeah, you know the the trailer was kind of funny. They did a good job with it, but like, you know, maybe like I don't even know what to say. Like, what, whether or not they didn't have a trailer made for it, or they yeah. want to show it on their own separate time. They want to have like their own. Kind of like because they three for three does that. They sometimes I'm not, like listen, that I'm not saying thing. like those like don't deserve any showtime at yeah. all, but just think like Halo got pert maybe in the B show, which is on Tuesday, for Halo did for and some of those other things got shown. Even Starfield, which again we have a separate show for, they showed a trailer in the Xbox mm -hmm. showcase mm -hmm. and had a show of their own. So like, could you have just snuck in a little Halo? I mean, that's the only thing. Is just like. Have a little respect for your Cornerstone franchise. It feels like, it, are they being viewed as the same as Starfield and Hellblade and Forza? Like, that's that's it's, the only thing I kind of agree with some of the upset fans is like, how could how could Halo be viewed like a second class citizen? I'm not saying that's exactly how they view, it, but that's what it felt like watching that. Yeah, it just feels kind of weird as a as a kind of a thing. And I'll just mention one last thing before we close it out. Seeing like kind of a lack of things like Gears of War and uh you know that's things far like away that. though. I, yeah, I don't and, think and, and, probably farther away than people think. That's probably and maybe I'm just I'm just one of those people that when I see Persona Five I get all excited, but then you see <laughs> Persona Five tactics get thrown in there. <laughs> I'm sitting here about to bash my head against the television because I'm like I and I'm not gonna blame Xbox for that. This is more like an Atlas I issue. They, um, like the milk. they just they like, like to the milk their franchises and get yeah. people pissed off when it's not a mainline story game anymore. Um, but the Xbox Series X, S in carbon black, I was just like, well, it means that they're sticking with the Series S for the long haul and they're going to try to beef it up so that it can get access to major. I, I can't even imagine Starfield, the size of the game is going to be based on what they showed. And we're going to talk a lot about that in the in our next video. But yeah, I mean, that those little things like, yeah, they're, they're all right. But yeah, having not Halo there and just like, like you said, more more gameplay, I think. Other than that, guys, I want to get your opinions overall about what you thought about the Xbox showcase. Was it good? Was it bad? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Band signing off. Peace out, guys.